In this video we will demonstrate the use of the optimal equipment placement function using storage models. The function can be used to resolve overloads in an existing network by the placement of storage models at optimum positions along feeders, whilst at the same time ensuring that the overall installation and operating costs are minimized. Study Case 10.1 Opt Placement Storage Should Be Activated this study case is for the 7th of January, when the loadings are at their highest. Let us first run a quasi-dynamic simulation to assess the feeder loadings on this day. For each feeder, the maximum loading across all its constituent elements is calculated, and this is done for each time step. Here in a network model manager, we see the loading results. In this column, the maximum value of max loading across the day is shown. Sorting on this column, we see that feeder FD215 is overloaded for at least part of the time. We shall therefore focus on this feeder. A plot can be used to see how the feeder loading varies through the day. It can be seen that the feeder is overloaded for a number of hours. And here in the feeder graphic, the overloaded elements are highlighted. We return to the distribution network optimization toolbar and use this icon to open the optimal equipment placement command. The equipment type is set to storage models, and the feeder of interest is selected. We will save the resulting changes in a new network variation. On the equipment page, the equipment to be added can be configured. In the static generator, on the optimal equipment placement page, we can see that efficiency curves have been selected, and the active power limits for charging and discharging the storage device have been specified. The installation and operating cost data are also entered here. In the storage model, the energy related parameters are set. Note that we have chosen to include a constraint that the state of charge must return to its starting value by the end of the time period. On the constraints page of the command dialog, we specify that the maximum thermal loading should be 100%. On the time sweep page, the command is configured to carry out the calculation for a single day, using a time step size of 15 minutes. Now the command can be executed. Depending on the complexity of the network, the optimization can take some time. When the analysis is complete, we can see that a storage unit has been added to the feeder, here. On this plot page, we can see the outcome of the optimization. In the upper plot, the red curve shows the results before the optimization, where the feeder is overloaded as we saw before. The green curve shows how the feeder loading has been managed through the introduction of the storage equipment. In the lower plot, the active power output of the new storage unit is shown, providing generation support during the middle of the day when it is needed and charging during other periods of the day. Reports enable us to look at the costs for this solution. This page provides information about the storage equipment, while here we can see the impact on the network element loadings 